here again, Roman Delay. Warm welcome, please. All right, I'm back. <laughs> Roxanne, it's so great to have you here for many reasons, but one in particular is that Station F has a sort of special history with TechCrunch. Yeah, we do. Three years ago, I think it was right here on this stage, you unveiled Station F to the world. So it's been three years. It's been live for two and a half years, something like that. And I think the excitement has been like off the charts. Did you expect that kind of hype with President Macron coming for, for the opening, for instance? Uh, yeah, so we have an incredibly special relationship with TechCrunch because I remember we went to London when Disrupt was back in London in the day, and uh, we announced our first partners, kind of essentially people knew Station F was coming, but nobody had any idea what it would be. So we made all of our first announcements at Disrupt, and we knew it was going to get some attention. I mean, our founder, Xavier Niel, he's obviously very well known. The project was extremely ambitious. We knew uh, Macron pretty early on he was going to probably come to, uh, to our opening. We did not expect the amount of attention that it's continued to get and the momentum that has built up since all the presidents and ministers and people that have come to visit. So that's been a, a quite a surprise. Great. So let's, let's dive in and talk about Station F as it is today. So you have your own programs where you accept entrepreneurs so that they can relocate to Station F and work from there. The Founders Program, the Fighters Program. Can you tell us a few words about this and how many people do you have in this program? So yeah, so Station F uh, is essentially designed like a university for startups. We have 30 different programs. Uh, one third of them are done by corporates like Microsoft and Facebook. Uh, we have one third that are by universities. We have some of the best French business schools, engineering schools, so HEC, INSEAD, they have their programs on campus. Um, and then we have one third of our programs that are done by uh, startup organizations like Entrepreneur First has their French program at Station F. Um, and then we run two programs in-house ourselves. There's a lot of other services that we provide, however. We have 30 different public services. We have an investor community with about 40 different funds. We have a makerspace. We recently launched housing. So really, this is trying to, to put everything an early stage company would possibly need right in one place. And you have a post office. And we have a post office with exceptional hours. <laughs> Goes all the way to 10 PM. <laughs> so how do the partnerships work? Does it mean that they have a long-term commitment, or can they move on and do something else and you have to find new partners? Yeah, all of our partners at Station F are minimum one-year engagement, and we like to keep it pretty flexible because partners will come and go. Did you have some, do you have some examples of partners that like, thought it wasn't a good fit? Um, to date, we've only had one partner that's left, and that was because they didn't have funding to continue at Station F. But otherwise, oh. uh, all the other partners have continued. And do you want to name it? or? <laughs> it was Numa, Numa, who's still going strong and is a, is a well-recognized partner in the French ecosystem. Yes, so you have some tech partners. So you said Facebook, Microsoft, uh, AWS, uh, not AWS, actually. Facebook, Microsoft. Uh, uh, Apple we Nike, have on campus. Apple. Yeah. And you have some uh, um, different industries as well. So banks, BNP, Paribas, uh, luxury, e-commerce, LVMH, L'Oreal. Is it important to have this mix of partners so that you can tackle different industries? Yeah, exactly. Um, essentially, at Station F, you won't have two programs on the same topic. Uh, we did that, obviously, to limit competition as well between programs. Um, but also because we wanted to make sure that any startup from any industry would find a good fit at Station F. And so we have 30 different programs, and they all cover different stages, different verticals, different stages, uh, sorry, and ge geographies as well. So we have, for example, a France-China program, which lets you spend six months, six months in France and six months in China. And do, do you plan on building a Station F in China just for that? <laughs> Not yet. Uh, actually, our France-China program has their own spaces in China with two different universities. So they actually already have the space on the ground there. We're, no, we're not at this stage planning on replicating Station F anywhere else. All right, you talked about housing a bit. Um, a few months ago, you announced and you launched uh, Flatmates. What is Flatmates? So Flatmates is essentially a massive co-living space for 600 of the entrepreneurs at Station F. Uh, many people may know that housing is very complicated in Paris. It's even more complicated when you're an entrepreneur. So usually to be able to find uh, a flat in, in Paris, you'd have to gain 
You'd have to make three times rent a salary. You'd have to have a fixed term contract, which is impossible if you're founding a company. Um, you'd probably have to have somebody local as a guarantor. This is just stuff that as an entrepreneur, and especially as a foreign entrepreneur, you would never have. One third of our population is actually non-French. Uh, so we actually built this to really respond to that demand. And how does it work? They just rent a bedroom in an apartment? So uh, each apartment has six people living in it. Obviously, you get a private room. You can get shared bathroom, private bathroom. We have different options. Um, starts at 399 euros per room per month. So it's very affordable. And it's essentially, once you get accepted to a program at Station F, you can also get accepted to the housing. So for the past um, few weeks, there's been a lot of talk about work-life balance. Uh, for instance, Away, the luggage company, um, they've, they've come and they're under pressure because people have been noticing that they're, they're making people work on New Year's Eve to ship bags. Um, and it feels like you're kind of selling this lifestyle where you eat, sleep, breathe, take all the time. How do you feel about that? So the truth is, it could not be farther from the truth because actually Station F, uh, we actually launched it uh, with the idea in mind that it would be full 24-7, and that is definitely not the case. Uh, we've noticed that people take holiday. Station F, we still probably have several hundred people that will stay in the evenings and on weekends, but it's definitely not the majority of people that choose to work uh, later hours or extra hours. So actually, we tend to find that we're actually surprised by how, quote unquote, little the entrepreneurs actually end up working compared to the cliches that we have in mind. Okay, so you don't think you're participating in this kind of uh, lifestyle? No, I don't, I, I don't think our entrepreneurs are necessarily uh, that style of entrepreneur. Great. Let's switch gear and talk about some of the famous guests you've had over the, the years. So you've had important tech CEOs come, coming for a visit, Jack Dorsey, for instance. Uh, you've had important heads of state as well. Uh, Zelensky, the new president of Ukraine, was there recently. Um, how, why do people think they have to go to Station F when they come to Paris? So I think Station F has kind of, uh, it's become one of the key stops that you make now when you come to Paris. You go see the Eiffel Tower, you see the Louvre, and now you see Station F. Um, I think part of it's also just simply because it's a really great, great way to see this kind of new vibe that's, that's come about in Paris. We, we've started to kind of feel this momentum for the last few years, lots of new startups, lots of attention going to the ecosystem, and this is a great way for it to be crystallized. You can meet so many different players in one location. And I think that's why um, we've been very fortunate in that we also have a huge push and backing from the government. Uh, they support us, they share us with a lot of their delegations, and so a lot of people are coming to see Station So when F. you say new vibe, what have you noticed in the French tech ecosystem that has changed over the past five years, ten years? Well, I think uh, starting about maybe 2016, so this was one year prior to Station F's launch, we started to see a lot more companies, a lot, a lot of people actually turning away from more traditional ecosystems, people wanting to come back from Silicon Valley. Uh, maybe it was in part facilitated by Brexit and the new president in the U.S., um, and we've actually seen that as a, as a reason for people actually turning towards, uh, towards France. But also the arrival of Macron has been a great pro-business vibe uh, and message to the world. So we've seen in the last year alone his announcement with you know, the new uh, late-stage funding initiative that he launched, the new talent visa for foreign entrepreneurs. So I think today, instead of France simply attracting people that left, it's now attracting some of the best talent from around the world. And we're seeing people arrive that don't speak any French, have never worked in France, and they're joining some of the, the great companies that we have there. Give us some numbers. So how many people, residents of Station F, are foreigners? And do you care about diversity as well? Yeah, yeah. diversity is huge for us uh, on many levels. So the entire Station F community uh, is one-third international. We have over 600 people on campus that don't speak French, so our language is English. Uh, many people, when they come to Station F, they don't feel like they're in France anymore, and in a sense, they're not in France anymore. The countries that actually are the best represented um, in order are the U.S., China, and Morocco, and Americans are always blown away by the fact that the Americans would be the best represented. Um, but diversity for us doesn't stop there, so we've paid a lot of attention to minority and female founders, especially. We have... Uh, Five of our 30 programs today that have 45% or more female founders. Mm. Now, we still have a ways to go to get to 30 programs, 50%, but we'll get there. 
And we also have one program on campus that's very dear to us. And actually, it was um, really what our founder wanted to do when he created Station F, and aside from just making a big space. It's called the Fighters Program. And it's for people coming from underprivileged backgrounds. And so, for example, in that program, we have someone who's a former prisoner. He used to steal uh, cars, and now he's making an anti-theft device for cars. So we think there's nobody better than him to do the job. And so that's a really a program designed for people that maybe don't have higher education, are refugees, or have lived a difficult life. And what's situation. the name of his company? This company is called Digital. And uh, we're actually really proud of him because he actually pitched on stage not too long ago. Um, we launched 40. exactly. We launched this event uh, this year called Future 40. Our 40 most promising up-and-coming startups uh, that we're also fundraising in the near future. And so he's actually, to date, the only fighter that pitched on that stage. And, and he's actually making headway with some good negotiations. Give us some other names of your favorite startups at Station F. I'm sure you've seen hundreds or even thousands of yeah. startups by now. Yeah, we have so many. What so should we um, be looking for? So from the top 30 this year, there were quite, uh, that, the top 30 is essentially our, our best performing startups. Um, we have Vitality, which is an e-gaming, uh, e-sports company that has made a lot of news in France. They're working with Stade de France. Uh, they've done some significant rounds of funding. I think they, they just released a 20 million round of funding not too long ago. Um, we've had a company called Chronos Care uh, that they actually do post uh, sales service. So after you make a purchase online on an e-commerce site, they actually go through with a lot of the stuff that happens after making the, the sale. They were acquired, a uh, tiny team. Um, but actually, a lot of companies that are making, are getting more attention after the Future 40 event, for example. Um, we have a lot of uh, medical diagnostics companies, uh, one called Agenty that's testing for um, Alzheimer's. Uh, so we have really, we run a whole gamut of different, of different topics and stages at Station F. Very interesting. So let's switch gear and talk about some, some personal use of yours. Uh, you participate in Atomico's angel program. So you're basically scouting companies for them. They're, being you, they're giving you a bring big um, envelope of cash, and you have to in invest it over time in multiple companies. Uh, how does that work? Like, how do you feel about that? Yeah, I think that was a really remarkable program. So Atomico launched this one year ago. Yeah, um, and right here, actually. Yeah, and it, was, um, it only lasts for one year. So they give each of the different angels uh, an envelope of cash, and they say, essentially, you guys can pick the companies that you want to invest it in. Um, and so I picked four. I was really pleased to announce uh, the first one that I invested in was an all-female-founded company called Caramel. Um, and they're actually doing an application to help parents find activities for their kids, which one would think that would exist and be easy, but actually it's, it's not. Um, and so I, I really was very pleased to meet that company. So I've done a couple other deals, not all of them are public to date, but I think it also, this program really kind of helps get over that fear and kind of demystifies what it means to make an investment into a company. Yeah, so I wrote about Caramel, so you can check it out on, on TechCrunch. And does it mean that at the end of the year, you're not going to do it again and next year? So every year, they're, someone else? they're renewing the batch of angels. So they're going to be announcing shortly, maybe soon, um, the new angels that they have. Uh, and so every year will be a new batch of, I think, six to 10 people. Like the entire batch is going to be new or are yeah. some people going to stay? Uh, no, they change it every year. They may have something in the future for people who want to continue uh, in another form. But the, the point is to really encourage more and more people to learn what it is to invest. Okay, so out of the four companies that you've, um, you've uh, invested in through Atomico's uh, angel program, are they based at Station F? Uh, yes, they have all had a relationship with Station F. Uh, not all of them are based there today. And how do you feel about the potential conflict of interest that could raise with running Station F on one side and investing in only four companies out of the hundreds and hundreds. It's true. It definitely, um, it's one, it's a very hard pick because I'm in touch with so many amazing companies. But also, that's where my deal flow is. And I think like any investor, you have to look at where your deal flow is. So if I have to go for startups that have strictly no relationship with Station F, I would be in a much, much smaller pool. Yeah, of course. So now let's talk about the future. I think Station F is off to a great start. How do you think you can make it work over the next 10 years, 20 years? Do you have to make any changes? So Station F, actually, we've evolved quite a bit in the last two years alone. Um, I like to tell a lot of people in the first two years, we were really just beta testing and 
fixing bugs, and I still feel like we have a, um, quite a bit of work to do just from, from that perspective. But actually, what we're really going to be focusing on um, for the upcoming years is going to be on encouraging all of our startups to be more values driven and to really integrate values, diversity, sustainability into all the 1,000 companies that we have there. So people come to Station F and they're like, oh, well, do you have a program um, you know, for, for sustainable companies? But actually, we think every single company there should have that as part of their business. Um, and so we're going to be making the shift in that direction. And how can you force startups to adopt to these values? So I think we're actually, over time, going to be integrating it into the types of companies that we pick, the types of companies we work with. We're, we're in kind of a luxurious position today because we have over 11,000 companies that apply to Station F every year. Wow. Uh, so we can really be selective. Are you going to pick some and leave the, all the others in the dark? Yeah, and I think we'll probably include it at some point in the criteria at Station F. Cool, and then it comes to the other programs from third-party partners? It will be the same. All 1,000 companies. It's going to be part of the contract, basically, yeah. if you become a partner of Station F. Sustainability first, for instance. All of, all of the different values criteria we think is important. So sustainability and diversity, obviously, given how important it is to us, will at some point become part of the criteria. And so how many startups in total have been a Station F resident over the years? Uh, so we're actually only two and a half years old, yeah. and companies tend to stay as long as they possibly can. So we've now capped it at two years. Um, I think we probably had something close to 2,000 companies to date go through Station F, uh, just given the turnover uh, that we've had these last few years. And out of these 2,000 companies, have you seen some great exits that you want to mention? Uh, yeah, we've had quite a few exits um, over the last two years. I think we had five exits that were listed in the top 30 list uh, that we shared. So we had one that was acquired by Magic Leap. It was a company doing um, virtual reality conferencing solution, uh, a company um, called Mimesis, and it was in the Ubisoft program. So Ubisoft does a lot of great technologies, uh, not only in gaming, but also in kind of in the virtual reality space. Um, and we had another uh, company that was acquired by Le Bon Coin. Uh, I mentioned earlier Kronos Care that was acquired by a U.S. company as well. Uh, so we've actually had quite a few acquisitions. And we also have acquisitions that people choose not to make public. So in our first year, we had probably something around 12 acquisitions. Only two were made public. And I think probably one of my favorite acquisition stories, even though it, it now dates back to the first six months of Station F, was uh, a company acquired by SAP. Recast AI, chatbot solution, founded by a female founder under 30 years of age. So is it ticking all the right boxes for you? It's ticking a lot of the right boxes. It has more boxes to tick. <laughs> cool. Well, that's great. Uh, we only have uh, a, a few seconds left. I wanted to ask you, because every time I come to Station F, I'm quite surprised by how small the team is at Station F. Do you plan to grow the team and expand to new areas, maybe launch um, media websites and other stuff? Uh, yeah, so our team actually is remarkably small for how much we run. Uh, so actually, we're, what, a 35-person team today running Station F and the co-living extension. Um, we also work with a number of service providers that we actually consider also part of our team. So if you include everybody who handles maintenance and security, you probably go up to something like 60 people. It's actually quite a big team. Um, we started to internalize some of these services. Uh, we think that it, it can change the level of service, and we've, we've seen that done successfully elsewhere. Um, but I think we also are looking at how we can uh, grow also the teams that are working with startups and partners. Great. Roxanne, thank you so much. Thank you. And see you next time. Thanks.